You know, I've been trying to get excited for Yu-Gi-Oh, especially with the ban list that came out that didn't really do a whole lot other than take Cashier out the back and shoot it. But <sighs> Age of Overlord is looking like booty, booty butt cheeks with a side of turd blossoms. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the drunkiest most, <laughs> Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever living boo boo stain of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1200 ladder. My Jacksonville Jaguars lost, and I had a couple drinks today hoping that we were going to win against the Houston Texans, but we didn't because we're dog water. So, make me feel better by dropping a comment and subscribing as my parents clap for some random tennis match that's going on on TV. We watch a lot of tennis in my household, so please ignore that shit. <laughs> so, hope you're all having a fantastic day. I want to talk about Age of Overlord because... This set has been pissing me off. And yes, like I said earlier, I had a couple drinks. So we're extra spicy today, ladies and gentlemen. Vodka is one hell of a drink, ladies and gentlemen. You should try it. Mix it with some Sprite and like put a little bit of a, uh, like, what do you call it? Like a uh, orange crush mixer. Like it's, it's like the little spritz things you can put in your water. I don't know what I'm talking about, but add that in, make some Vodka in it. It's really good. Anyway, <laughs> um, I have been play testing stuff out of Age of Overlord for, I want to say a few weeks now. And it's pissing me off so bad because everything outside of that's not named SP Little Knight or the Dia Bell Star uh, package or Doomsday Star is just crap. <laughs> and I really hate saying that because the Horus cards are so disgusting, ladies and gentlemen. Like, they are so damn good when you get the sarcophagus established. If you can't establish the sarcophagus, then you're just playing with crap cards in your deck that are all bricks. Because when you think about it, right, Mseti, the Horus level eight thing that you can ditch itself in another card to search the sarcophagus and draw a card, that's a really good card. But all of the other Horus monsters are inherently bricks because they don't get you to the fucking sarcophagus. So by playing those other Horus monsters, if you don't like, let's say, mill the Emsetti and are able to get it back in your hand or into your deck, if you're playing like a tier element of Shizu deck with the Horus cards, it feels really bad and inconsistent. And I tried mixing it in with like rank eight Axis and it seemed okay. But again, if you didn't hit the King Sarcophagus, then you were kind of just sitting there with your thumb up your butt trying to figure out what you're going to do. And yes, I showed that deck profile off where we were playing a Synchron package with adventure cards and other things like that, along with the Dia Bell Star package. I actually ended up taking out the Dia Bell Star package and I was trying things like start a Synchron to try and establish level 12 Synchros because you know, all of the horse monsters are level eight. So you combine a level four tuner with that, you're going to be, excuse me, you're going to be able to get to a crimson dragon. Then if you're able to get out another level eight horse monster and another level four tuner, you can make another level 12. Goes to the opponent's turn, use crimson dragon, bounce it back, bring out King Calamity, you win the ball game. And there's definitely something there in that regard. But outside of that, there's not really anything there. Like, yeah, you can combine the Horus engine with the adventure package. That is really good. But it's like outside of that, what are you really doing? Like your end board is usually going to be something along the lines of maybe a couple Horus monsters with like Griffin Rider and a token, Draco back and Faithful Venture. Maybe you pull off a Coach King Giant Trainer, but like, what the fuck are you drawing into? Are you drawing into hand traps? Are you drawing into more Horus monsters that you don't need for that turn because you've already gone through all of your names? It's... It's really awkward, and I'm sure some people are going to say, well, Avery, just play the Centurions in it. Like, the Centurions out of Valiant Smashers makes it better, blah, blah, blah. I'm not testing the Centurions because we don't get those until later. You know, Konami just updated on uh, September 22nd the list of regionals for the Age of Overlord season, and I've got two. I've got uh, the one November 11th, and then I've got one, like, December 2nd. So I'm taking into account everything that we're going to have available at those points in time, and the Centurions aren't available, I think, till like, December is when we get Valiant Smashers. So uh, the Horus monsters really just aren't that good until we get the Centurion monsters, which are also level eights. Now, SP Little Knight and Doomsday Star, oh, mwah, mwah, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, uh, they make our Ultra Ball go from little soft like this to super hard and give us a chub. 
because they are that damn good. Like, if you are not picking up Doomsday Star and SP Little Knight, I don't know what you're doing, pimp. Like, it's it's insane. Now, the Dia Bell Star stuff is decent in Rescue Ace and like Volcanics and maybe Salad because you can use the Hunter Fiend to get to Dark Witch. Dark Witch gets you to the Simple Spoil Snake Eye, which can get you to a level one fire. In Rescue Ace, that gets you to the Fire Hydrant. You get to the Fire Hydrant, you've got all your plays going. It makes the deck itself less bricky. Now, I'm sure some people are gonna say, well, Avery, what about the Pendulum Monsters? How are the Pendulum Monsters doing? And it's Pendulums. Like a lot of people bitch and complain that like, Pendulums are the most broken mechanic in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And at face value, they are, right? Like, Pendulums inherently as an, as a, what do you call it? As a way to play the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! are very broken. You establish a 1 scale and an 8 scale, you summon anything from 2 through 7, it's broken. But even with the new stuff, if you get hit with a Droll, like, you're losing the fucking ball game. If you get hit with a Nibiru, you're losing the damn ball game. Like, even though the stuff is broken and like if you're establishing a Zark, you're winning. If you're not doing that or if you're getting hit with hand traps, you are losing, pimp. And so I feel like Age of Overlord, as much as I've been hyping up this set, I feel like it's only going to get better with time. It's not going to be that good out of the gate. I feel like out of the gate, come October 20th, Unchained is still going to be one of, if not the best deck of the format. Everything is going to be the same. We'll maybe see Pendulum and Rescue Ace has a, have a bit more representation because of the Diabell Star stuff and the new Pendulum Magician stuff or Odd Eyes, whatever, Zark, Pendulum support by extension. But I don't think it's going to be that revolutionary of a set like Power of the Elements was as I first thought. Maybe we'll see more of that come like Phantom Nightmare because I do think that the Ubel stuff out of Phantom Nightmare that we'll probably get in like January has the chance to be really, really good in our format, ladies and gentlemen. Like, especially that new Yabel fusion. Oh, super poly on that bitch. Oh, it's insane. If you haven't seen the new Yabel stuff, we've covered it on the channel. Um, that new Yabel fusion, basically being able to super poly up the whole board is just disgusting, ladies and gentlemen. And if you can consistently get to that, you are definitely winning. So I feel like Phantom Nightmare is going to be one of those sets that builds off of Age of Overlord, and Age of Overlord will get better with time. It's going to be like a piece of fine wine. It's going to get more divine as you move on through the mine of Yu-Gi-Oh! I try to rhyme. I can't rap, ladies and gentlemen. But it makes me less excited for the game. And on a more personal note, I am still waiting to find out if I'm banned from Konami events, from like Yu-Gi-Oh! sanctioned events by Konami or not. I've talked about that on the channel previously. I still don't know if I'm banned. Like, I know that I'm banned from one of the local card shops um, because of what happened. Uh, my team of people have told me to still not talk about it, so I have to kind of keep my mouth shut. I will talk about it at some point in the future, so be sure that you're subscribed for that. Um, but I still don't know if I'm banned. So it's kind of taking the wind out of my sails that, yeah, as much as I want to play test, the suspended players list hasn't been updated since 629 of this year. So I don't even know if I'm banned and Konami hasn't even reached out to me. So as, as excited as I want to be for Age of Overlord, I'm also kind of on the back foot in the sense of I don't know whether to invest in this set or not because I don't know if I'm going to be fucking banned. And if I am banned, I'm just going to quit the game. Like, it's... It's it's a really big misunderstanding and issue that I'm having to still deal with like two months out from now or like a month and a half, however long it's been. Um, and like I said, I will talk more in depth on the channel once I have the permission from my team of people to talk about it once everything is said and done. Um, it's a huge misunderstanding and mistake and it's it's a big thing. But that is playing a role in my whole excitement for Age of Overlord. And on top of that too, after testing everything, it's not as good as I thought it would be. And that's a damn shame because I really thought Age of Overlord was gonna be a good set. And it's decent. It's not as bad as like Duelist Nexus or like even the side set Soul Burning Volcano. Granted, that's a side set, it's not really comparable, but still a lot of people didn't really like Duelist Nexus. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Are you even excited for Age of Overlord? Like there are some good cards in that set, don't get me wrong, but it's not power of the elements level. And I'm not saying that every set needs to be power of the elements level, but 
until we get Valiant Smashers and we get the Centurion cards, I don't think Horus is going to be all that good. I've tried testing it with Tier Element of Shizu. Everyone's been saying that's going to be good. It's not all that fucking good. Because when you're milling the Horus cards and you're not milling Tier Element cards or Shizu cards, it's really dog shit. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.